How can you fight depression? How can you fight depression? People often feel that Christians should not be depressed. Well, that is so far from the truth. Just because you are Christian does not mean that you are exempt from depression, anxiety, or any other mental health conditions. Sometimes people want to blame God for situations that they are going through. Sometimes they just want to blame other people. But I'd like to share this passage of scripture with you found in Romans, the ninth chapter. We'll begin reading at verse number 19. One of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us? For who is able to resist his will? But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Verse 21, does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for special purposes and some for common use? I love that because God is saying that he is the potter and we are the clay. Now God is fair. God is loving, God is just. He gives us all an opportunity to seek his will. So let's look at some of the things dealing with depression. How can we fight depression? Feeling a little bit overwhelmed by depression and anxiety is common. God will always be there to help us to feel better. Christian depression is real and God cares a lot about our mental health. Even there are heroes in the Bible, like Elijah, Job, David. They felt the same way. So you don't have to beat yourself up feeling this way. Everyone is vulnerable to loneliness, even those who are known for their strong Christian faith. Even myself, there's times when I've had to battle depression and anxiety and I have no problem sharing my experience, my strength and my hope, but it's all rooted in God and godly counsel. So in this video, we're going to find out how to deal with depression and anxiety. It is only with the help of Jesus can we ever know how to overcome the spiritual and the internal things that go on inside of our bodies. Together, let's discover how to overcome these things by using godly counsel, by using, most importantly, God's word. Believe and have faith that God can set you free. Over and over, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, people are rebuked for not having the faith that was needed. And so many times people were healed, people were strengthened because of their faith. So let's look at this first thought. Depression is a battle that many of us face, but there is hope and help available. Today we are exploring how you can fight depression. So join us here on this journey of faith, of healing, and renewal. Hello everyone, my name is Harry Washington, and I am going to discuss with you a very important topic. How can you fight depression? Depression can feel overwhelming, isolating, but you don't have to face it alone. There is darkness that comes when we are dealing with depression and isolating. And that's the work of the enemy. It was once said that if a wolf after sheep, it will rush towards all of them. 
and the one that strays off, that one is in danger. And so we want to look at our lives as being the same as she, as so vividly is described in God's word. And God is that good shepherd. Jesus is that good shepherd. So we don't want you to feel isolated or alone. And sometimes you do. You will go to church and you will think that everyone has it together. No, no, no. Do not believe that. If you ask people, hey, this coming Sunday, bring all of your medication that you are taking for anxiety or depression or some other mental health ailment, guess what? You would be shocked. You would be surprised. Now, here's the deal, is that there's no medication out there that's going to help you with sin. No, 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 no. We have to look at that unconfessed sin. But let us go on, because God does not want us to isolate. He doesn't want us to feel overwhelmed like we are all alone. First of all, God says he will never leave us nor forsake us. But if we're not going to hold on to that, and when you're in depression, it is very hard. But do not isolate. Do not close God's word. Sometimes when you're in a depressed state, it seems like it's so difficult to pick up God's word. Been there and done that. So let me recommend this. Have the Bible that will read to you. Press play and just lay there or sit there and just let God's word come inside of your heart. Depression is more than just feeling sad. It's a deep and often chronic struggle that affects many aspects of life. It is important to acknowledge these feelings and understanding that seeking help is a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. I did Christian counseling for over three decades, and any time someone would come in, I would compliment them and say, thank you for being strong. And many times they would be confused with that statement because they did not look at themselves as being strong, but being weak. Let me clear this up. It's the weak ones who do not reach out for help. The strong ones will say, I need help. And they will go to the doctors. They will go to the counselors. Those are the strong ones. Let's look at Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses six and seven. This is the first step in fighting depression. It's turning to God in prayer. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Bring your struggles to him in prayer and allow his peace to fill your heart. What is causing me the anxiety? What am I anxious about? And then I start writing these things down. But in every situation, by prayer and petition. Now, when you hear that word petition, what does that mean? Petition. Does it sound like something that is passing, just blowing in the wind? Or does that sound like it's something that is direct, something that is meaningful? something that you are looking to receive, something that you're looking to give, a two-way street petition with thanksgiving. Well, how can you be thankful if you're struggling with depression, if you're struggling with anxiety? There's always something to be thankful for. 
yes, it can get so, so dark that you may not be able to see it, but you want to realize that you can talk to God anywhere and at any time. And if you can cry out the word help, don't you know that is so very powerful? Help. That will get you out of yourself saying that I am reaching out to God for help. So you want to have that thanksgiving and present your request to God. And I have to tell you, the peace of God, if you have never experienced that, you want to experience that. But once again, it's not about a formula, one plus one. It is about a relationship. And here's a bonus. You do not have to be perfect to have an awesome, amazing, fantastic relationship with God. And so that's what we're looking for. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Man, peace that transcends common sense, understanding that you don't know why you have so much peace because it transcends even your understanding. And others don't realize how you could have so much peace when you're going through difficult times. But once again, it is about a relationship. It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that's a key thing. Are you in Christ Jesus? Even if you're not in Christ Jesus, his love for you does not change. He loves the sinner just as much as he loves the Christian. So don't think because you are not in Christ yet that he will not help you. I just want you to have that faith in God because that is what he is looking for. May the good Lord bless you. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, thank you so very much for blessing us with this wonderful opportunity. I ask that you be with the listeners. You, Father, know everyone who's going to listen to this message, everyone who is going to receive what you have for them. We are all going to go through difficulties down here in life. No one is exempt, but we're thankful that we have you as the potter and we are the clay. You are the one who created us. You are the one who knows us intimately well. So we pray that we will lay at your feet and trust in your word. Thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. If you've been blessed by this so far, I encourage you to take this, to listen to it over again. Not only that, to subscribe and to share with others. In Jesus' name.